Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Vivolt Sirius mid-drive electric bike. So let's get into it. Before we get into the walk around of this awesome electric bike, if you are looking to purchase any of the V-Volt models, I'd really appreciate it if you use the link in the description prior to making your purchase. It's a free and easy way to support the channel and makes videos like this one possible. Thanks in advance for your support. I will also put links to our electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where I track all the deals happening on the electric bike brands that I follow. With that, let's take a closer look at the V-Volt Sirius. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this review, so apologies for the delay. Winter is just a challenge for us to be able to get out e-bike reviews, but I did do an unboxing of this electric bike, so you can check out that video if you are interested. Brought it to my local e-bike friendly mechanic, you can learn a little bit about the assembly process and some of these videos that I've done where I set up electric bikes, even if you're not looking at the particular electric bike that we are unboxing, it can be helpful because Matt over at All About Bikes is a great resource and we get into some of the things that we run into and he talks about how you might be able to fix some things on your own. With that, let's take a closer look at this V-Volt Sirius. This is their higher end model, currently priced at $27.99, comes in three different colors. This is the slate variation, and it does come in two frame sizes as well, which is always nice. This is the large, extra large, but it is also sold in a small medium. So let's take a closer look at the components. So first off, we have Kenda. 27 and a half by 2.2 inches wide. Definitely some knobby tires on this electric bike for increased traction. And I believe you can even go a little bit wider on these tires if you want something a little bit wider. Really like the tires they chose for this electric bike. In fact, when I'm riding this electric bike, I almost feel like I'm on a mountain bike. Now, as we go through some of the components on this electric bike, there might be some of the names that you're not familiar with. And part of this is because this is a higher end electric bike, of course, at that price point. But the other reason is V-Volt is a new e-bike brand and they're going with some really interesting components. So I was personally really excited to check this bike out. I've been in contact with the company for some time. So actually in the unboxing video, Matt noted that these are Novatech hubs. He was a big fan of that brand. I personally have no experience, but I think that is a higher end component. And it does have a through axle as well. So no quick release on this bike. Now, as far as brakes, we have 160 millimeter rotors here and we have radius hydraulic disc brakes. Now, during our assembly video, we found that the tolerances on these hydraulic disc brakes are a little tight, so it might be a little bit more difficult to get rid of some of those squeaks, though they probably will wear in over time. But one of the things that I've personally been appreciating about these electric bikes is they feel really good, got a good bite to them. So I personally have been a fan of these radius brakes. And before this, it is a brand that I was not familiar with. And you'll see here, we have the line for the hydraulic disc brake, and there is a mounting point to keep the cable right there on the front fork. And we do have an air suspension fork, which of course is higher end than you'll find on most electric bikes. And really in this price range, you should expect a higher end fork. It does have a lockout over here on the right side. I will go ahead and push on the front suspension so you can get an idea of the performance, but I've personally been a big fan and we did adjust the air to my liking. So again, front suspension feels really nice on this electric bike and fully customizable with that air adjustment. 
All right, let's move on to the cockpit of this electric bike. So straight handlebars, again, I just feel like this feels like a mountain bike. Not sure if you want to take a belt drive electric bike out on the trails, but perhaps that's something that I'll test out in the future. But let's take a closer look at the cockpit. Here's these really nice looking radius brakes. Again, just feel really nice. Big fan of those. We do have some nice locking grips here as well. Let's move on to the display again. As I talked about, lots of new things on this electric bike. This is an Explova display. Now I want to talk a little bit about the classification of this electric bike. So it does come as a class one electric bike, but you can purchase what they're calling the warp core upgrade. And that's what I have installed here. And the upgraded warp core display, which turns this bike into a class three electric bike can be purchased for $100. Now I believe the functions on them are the same. These buttons might not be red, but they're very similar displays. It's just that the programming is a little bit different. I'll go ahead and turn on this display. The display is backlit. Now in the top left-hand corner, you have your current miles per hour. And in the top right, you have your pedal assist level all the way up to five. Now in the middle, we have odometer and we have distance, which I assume is more of a trip odometer. And then we have a range as well. And then you will note here is the battery capacity here in the bottom right hand side. Not a whole lot of information there. Now you'll notice here the indicator for Bluetooth here. So you can actually connect this to your phone. You can use an app that currently works, but VVolt is developing their own app, which I think will be a little bit more polished. The app does provide some information, but in my opinion, it's probably something you go into once and that's probably it. I'll go ahead and put some screenshots of the app on the screen. Very simple app in my opinion. And of course this display is very simple as well. It does have a USB port on the right side of the display so you can charge your device if you'd like. Now you'll note that this has an external light on it. So if you want an upgraded light that is integrated into the battery, you can purchase that. I'm not sure if it's yet available, but they told me it will be available, but they actually include this rechargeable light that actually is very bright and has various settings. I'm actually a pretty big fan. I really like the flashing modes. Of course, that's really nice when riding during the day, alert motorists of your presence. Next, let's move on to the right side. So you may or may not have seen this before, but this is the Enviolo Nuvinci. And so the way you shift gears is you actually twist this and then the person on the bike goes up or down the hill. So you can shift the bike to your liking. And of course they're pairing this with the Enviolo rear hub, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. And one other cool thing that I wanted to point out with VVolt is all these graphics around the bike are reflective. So that's going to add some additional visibility on the road. So that's really cool that they did that, something unique. Now on this integrated battery here, there is a power button and that's gonna give you a little bit idea of battery capacity. I'll go ahead and pull this battery out so you can get an idea of its size. Now this is a smaller battery than you might otherwise find on other electric bikes, but of course it is very efficient. Of course, with this mid drive motor that we'll talk about here in a little bit, VVolt gives a range estimate of 20 to 40 miles. That sounds pretty reasonable in my opinion. A lot of companies overshoot that. Of course, I haven't been able to do a full range test, so perhaps I'll have to do some follow-up videos on this bike, but it is a 36 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery. And one of the nice things with this smaller battery is of course it reduces the weight on your electric bike. So this is a little bit lighter than some other electric bikes. All right, let's talk about this motor. So this is a new company to me. MPF is the manufacturer of this motor. 85 newton meters of torque according to VVolt. And it has a nominal rating of 250 watts and peaks at 500 watts. And we have a torque sensor here. So this is gonna be more of a true biking experience. 
And what I mean by that is the more power that you put into the pedals, the more power that the motor is going to give you. Now, of course, you, there are many electric bikes with cadence sensors. It's personal preference on whether you prefer cadence or torque. I just find that more experienced cyclists tend to like the torque sensors because of course they're a little bit more used to cycling, want to get that workout, just want a little extra juice to go a little bit further. And that's actually what I prefer as well. I like to get a workout when we ride our electric bikes. So I've been really happy with the MPF motor. I think I would have to put it side by side with a Bosch or Shimano motor, but it is incredibly silent in my opinion, definitely quieter than the rear hub motors. All right, let's move on to the rear of the bike here. Rear mounted kickstand, really like that. Not going to come in contact with the pedals. Speaking of pedals, these are just simple plastic pedals. I'll probably put some metal pedals on here for some additional grip. Of course, metal pedals are going to last a little bit longer as well. We do have some mounting points here for a rear rack. I actually might opt to put a rear rack here. And then we do have bottle cage bosses right here in the seat tube. Here's a closer look at the rear hydraulic radius brakes here. And V-Volt does include a rear light as well. It just goes on and off. And very standard saddle on this electric bike. Again, this is personal preference. If you want something a little bit more cushy, check out our electric bike accessories list. But this is a very basic saddle in my opinion. All right, let's move on to the rear of the bike. Now you might be looking at this. If you've never seen this before, this might look like a motor to you, but this is actually an internally geared hub. And as I showed you earlier, changing the position of that person going up the hill, that's how you change the gears. I'll actually go ahead and do that quickly so you can get an idea how this works. So as I shift this, you can see that the cable is changing. And of course that is changing the gears on this belt drive electric bike. Now, of course, when you're looking at belt driven electric bikes, you'll find a lot of single speeds. And then if they do have gears, they're going to have something very similar to this internally geared hub because that's the only option. And because of the belt, you can see there's actually a cutout here. So you're able to get that belt on and you can adjust the belt tension here as well. This is a Gates carbon belt. So should hold up for a long time. I'm actually very interested to see how this performs over the long term. Should be no maintenance for many, many miles. And of course, that's one of the huge benefits of belt driven electric bikes. And here's a closer look at the MPF motor over here on the right side. And as far as cables go, they actually all come out underneath here and run to the belt, of course, as well as the hydraulic disc brake. Okay, that concludes the walk around of the V-Volt Sirius electric bike. Let's get to some first person riding footage and I'll kind of talk through how this bike feels while riding. And then of course, we'll take it up the large hill that I test out all of our electric bikes on. Hey everyone, future Ryan here coming from a much warmer climate than what the weather was when I filmed this V-Volt Sirius review. One of the things that I wanted to call out is V-Volt sent me the warp core upgrade. And what that does is it turns the V-Volt Sirius from a class one electric bike into a class three electric bike. Now, when you're watching this footage, you'll note that I don't quite hit 28 miles per hour, but I believe that is because I didn't have the motor turned all the way up within the app. So I just wanted to call that out before I share with you the first person riding footage. I will be doing some more filming with the V-Volt when the weather improves back in Wisconsin. So I'll be sure to check it out and make sure it gets up to that 28 miles per hour. So be sure to subscribe if you're interested in more V-Volt footage with that. Let's check out the first person riding footage on the V-Volt Sirius and see what the mid-drive motor can do. Okay, welcome to the first person riding footage on the V-Volt Sirius. You may note that it is extremely foggy today and I just had to get out and ride though because one, I was super excited to hop on the V-Volt finally. It's been a few days since I unboxed it. And the other thing is it's nearly 50 degrees in December in Wisconsin. So despite these conditions where the visibility is pretty terrible, I wanted to get the first person riding footage done because it is such a nice day out. Now this one is going to be a little bit different compared to the first person riding footage that I do on 
a lot of electric bikes because of course this is a class one electric bike, tops out at 20 miles per hour and therefore it does not have a throttle so we will not be doing a throttle test for obvious reasons. But what I wanted to do in this first person riding footage is just talk through how this bike feels while you're riding it. Of course you have the Enviolo shifting here where there's not really gears so that's a little bit tricky to talk about. And then of course we also have the different pedal assist levels which I'll go through and talk about. So it's not an exact science for an electric bike like this one just due to not having actual gears. Now one of the things that I really wanted to call out as I was riding over here is just how quiet this electric bike, generally speaking mid drives are pretty quiet uh, in my opinion. Now in combination with the belt though, this bike is just very silent. You can just barely hear the motor. I'm not sure if you'll even be able to hear it in the footage, maybe in the higher pedal assist levels. Anyway, let's get on with the first person riding footage. I thought it would be kind of fun to start in pedal assist five uh, and just see how fast this thing can get to or how fast it can get to 20 miles per hour rather because of course uh, usually this is where I start the throttle test. So uh, I do have uh, it shifted down into a high gear I guess and so we'll see how fast we can get. Got GPS speed, speedometer app by Cool Nicks. All right, here we go. Now definitely some resistance getting started. 15, 18, 20 miles an hour, 22, uh, 23. A bit more than I expected. There's 25 miles an hour. And again, I'm getting a bit of a workout without a doubt. But that was a higher speed than I thought I was going to get on this electric bike. 23 miles an hour. Of course I could shift, make it a little bit easier on myself. Pedals are definitely spinning at a faster cadence. There's 17 miles an hour. Okay, so let's kind of do a, a reset. I'm actually going to turn the pedal assist off because a lot of people ask me can you pedal whatever electric bike I'm reviewing with no assist and it's a fair question. Now I have this in its lowest gear so that means easiest pedaling right now. You can see the hill on the person on the bike here on the right side that I showed you earlier in the walk around. But yeah, this is a, a very easy cadence, I would say. Going eight to 10 miles an hour. So definitely doable. Of course, I can make it more difficult on myself. Get a bit more of a workout. Now, as with most electric bikes, you don't want to run the battery dead because hills are going to be a lot more of a challenge. Okay, so next, let's maybe shift into a high gear here the highest gear. Going pedal assist one. And then I'll kind of just go up from there. Now definitely feel a lot of resistance still. I, there's a lot of room for me to really push hard on the pedals. So pedal assist one, 12 miles an hour. Now I could make it a little bit easier, shift into a lower gear. There's 13 miles an hour. Again, not too terribly hard. So that's what you can expect from pedal assist one. Now, one of the nice things with this bike, with the torque sensor, it just feels more like a cycling experience. Power delivery is nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist two. I will again, going to what I would normally call the highest gear. Now obviously traveling at a little bit higher of speed. 14 miles an hour, 15. And I did actually have to make sure that I was 
in the highest gear there. So yeah, on the high side gear wise, definitely lots of room to provide your own power, which is really nice. And we'll obviously check out the low gears when we do the hill climb test in a little bit in pedal assist three. Again, still in the highest gear. And again, still providing a lot of my own effort by choice. And 15 miles an hour, still 16. And of course, could shift into lower gears, so much range to make it as easy or as hard as you want. Let's go ahead, back to that highest gear, pedal assist four. And again, I think personally, for me as a rider, I would actually shift into a lower gear just slightly in really all of these pedal assist modes. Because that highest gear, definitely lots of resistance. Which is good because if you're going down a hill or something, there's definitely gonna be room for you to provide your own power. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist five here. Shift back down to that highest gear. And again, I'm not working too terribly hard. Definitely not as hard as I was working when I kind of did the top speed run. But there's 20 miles an hour. Nice and easy, cruising. Feels really nice. Now, I will say, with this shifter, being that it's a twist shifter, it's just something to get used to. Twist shifting isn't necessarily something that's new, but perhaps if you have you know, really sensitive wrists. Uh, it might be a little bit of a challenge for you to twist this. Um, it's not too terribly hard, but you know, it's not like pushing a trigger on a lot of the electric bikes that I review uh, or using a thumb shifter. So that's probably going to just depend on the rider, your preference. Uh, but something I wanted to call out because, you know, if you are going to be shifting a lot, you're going to be turning on this quite a bit. So with that, let's get to the hill climb test and we'll see what this MPF motor can do up a steep hill. Here we are at the hill climb test. I know you can't tell that there's a hill in front of me, but there indeed is wheel put on the screen, a picture of the hill as well as the specs. And you can get an idea of how all of the electric bikes that we review compare to each other. Now, again, this one's going to be a little bit more unique because again, usually I do do a throttle only test up the hill. And as I was riding over here, just reconfirmed what I was saying before. On the high end, really love the range that the NVOLO gives you. Just very conducive to getting as much of a workout as you want. And that's something that I really appreciate in an electric bike. A lot of the bikes that I review we're riding in seventh gear or usually whatever the highest gear is, adjusting the pedal assist. And there just isn't as much range to be able to get a workout, especially when you're traveling at higher speeds. And since we are riding in poor conditions, I am very happy that I have some showers pass gear. And I thought I would mention that they are a sister company to V-Volt. So definitely appreciate them hooking me up with some gear really appreciating it on days like today as well as all of the winter days that i've been riding definitely some nice gear and uh keeping me nice and dry and i do have some showers past pants on as well that are giving me some increased visibility on the road and of course i have the high vis jacket on here all right with that let's get on with the hill climb test i thought what i might do is kind of try to go up the hill at high speeds and then halfway up or while it's still steep, kind of really shift down to give you an idea if you really wanted to conserve battery 
or you just wanted to make sure that it was easy enough uh, if you are looking at this electric bike. So I do have an Impel Assist 5 uh, close to the highest gear. Let's go ahead and make sure we are. And I'm probably gonna wanna shift down here. So definitely getting a bit of a workout here. And I'm going 18 miles an hour still. And pedal assist five. So definitely going to want to shift to a lower gear here. 13, 12. And yeah, keep wanting to uh, shift a little bit lower. And actually, right now, I am in the lowest gear. And so you can see that my legs are spinning a little bit. The motor is definitely not having a problem going up this hill, giving me some of its power, definitely doing the bulk of the work right now, I would say. Of course, what's nice is I can shift as needed. So yeah, eight miles an hour I think was kind of the lowest. And if I really slow down here, again, torque sensor. So the motor is giving me less. When I'm pushing less on the pedals, kind of feel a little bit the motor kicking on and off. But I mean, no problem if you wanted to go up a hill this slow, it just kind of depends on your personal athletic ability. And of course, if you want to get more of a workout, you do have the ability to shift. So I would say on the lower end, definitely as long as you can spin the pedals, you're gonna be just fine. Of course, an electric bike like this is much more conducive to pedaling a little bit more. So something to keep in mind. And so I think the bike did pretty good going up that hill. So with that, let's get to some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the V-Volt Sirius. Let me start out by saying I'm a huge fan of belt drive e-bikes paired with a NVOLO internally geared hub. It all started when I hopped on the Serial One e-bikes back in 2021. I was sold. The biggest selling point is the no maintenance. The belt should last thousands of miles and you don't have to worry about keeping it greased or getting dirty. The VVolt Sirius is an e-bike that you just hop on and ride for miles and miles. We'll be doing a long-term test on this bike as I imagine this will be our go-to e-bike for my wife and I to ride around our city this summer. And if you plan to stick to paved trails more often, you can check out the Proxima, which has thinner tires and no front suspension, currently priced $100 cheaper at $26.99. And finally, there's the Alpha and the Alpha Step Through, which still gives you a belt drive, but has the Explova Acer rear hub motor and is a single speed. Those models are just $13.99. And let's just talk about price a little bit. The Sirius is undoubtedly a premium e-bike and those who aren't familiar with the components are quick to judge the high price. But if you can find a mid-drive, belt-drive e-bike with an NVOLO rear hub priced better than the V-Volt models, then let me know. If you value the belt, mid-drive, internally geared hub combo, you won't find a better deal out there. This is why I was so excited to review a V-Volt electric bike. The V-Volt Sirius is very close to my dream e-bike. It packs just about all of the features I could want in an e-bike with just a few things I see as opportunities for improvements. Its knobbier tires paired with the air fork make it versatile and I enjoy the torque sensor which allows for smoother power delivery and also allows me to get more of a workout. The warp core upgrade will allow me to get to my destination even faster as a class 3 electric bike and is an option I think those buying this e-bike should strongly consider. Now for the improvements. Even though I like the rechargeable included light, I would have liked to see front and rear integrated lights. I'm told an integrated front light will be offered as an add-on accessory in the future. You should also be aware that this battery is on the smaller side at 375 watt hours. Vivolt says it's good for 20 to 40 miles, which sounds pretty accurate. 
It's not a deal breaker for me since almost all of our trips fall well within that range. One benefit of the smaller battery though is the lighter weight of this e-bike at just 55 pounds. Finally, the display is basic, though it's pretty clear there is a lot more information to pull, so I'm excited to see Vvolt's app when it's released. The Sirius is offered in two sizes, small, medium, and large, extra large. Here I'm riding the large, extra large with a 33.2 inch standover height. I'm six feet tall with a 32 inch inseam if that helps. Worth highlighting is the almost unheard of in the e-bike industry, three year warranty with no mileage limitations. Wear and tear is excluded, but basically if you have issues with your battery, motor, transmission, belt, wheels, brakes, etc., Vvolt has your back. I was able to meet with the Portland based Vvolt team at Sea Otter and I can say with confidence that they are a reputable company. The way they package their e-bikes is also unique, so be sure to check out our unboxing and assembly video if you're interested. Again, if you're looking to purchase a V-Volt e-bike, please consider using the link in the description. It's a free and easy way to help us review awesome e-bikes like the V-Volt Sirius. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.